What's up everybody, you're very welcome along to this Anfield Agenda Euros prediction show. This is a little bit different to our previews and that what I'm going to try and do here is go through each group, put the teams in the order I think they'll finish in. It's on the UEFA website if anybody wants to have a go with this themselves at home. And let's see if I can predict all the way through to the end and look. If my fantasy Premier League attempts are anything to go by, this is going to be every kind of wrong and it's going to be, you know, don't put any money on what I'm saying here is what I'm trying to say to you ladies and gentlemen because my predictions are usually all over the place. But it is a little bit of fun and it is the Euro so why not? Let's start off with Group A and for me look, Italy are going to win this group and I think most of you will agree with me on that one. Uh, it's going to be very difficult who's going to come second. A lot for me will come down to the opening game of the tournament between Turkey and Italy but... I'm going to go for Turkey to finish in second spot, Wales to finish in third spot, and Switzerland to finish a neutral fourth. That, I know you're probably thinking differently, but it is my goal, so ne 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 ne. Right, we move on to Group B, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this look, Belgium to top the group. I think most of you, again, will probably agree with me on that one. Now, it's the second place in this group that I have a little bit of a, a, little bit of a worry around. Will it be Russia? Will it be Denmark? Denmark, I know from experience, obviously being an Ireland fan, that if they show up, they can be devastating. They do have Christian Eriksen, didn't have his greatest season with Inter Milan, still a very fine player. Russia, a little bit of the unknown. You know what? I'm going to push it to Denmark. I'm going to stick Denmark in there in second place. I'm going to put Russia in third place in Group B, and then I'm going to drop Finland into fourth place. So again, let me know if there's any differences. And look, I know there's going to be people from all different nationalities watching this and somebody's going to feel offended. I understand it. I'm sorry. I don't mean any offence. These are my genuine predictions. I don't mean to run anyone's country down. First of all, my country is not the Euro, so you're already one up on me. Right, moving into Group C, ladies and gentlemen. Got to go with the Dutch to top this one. Even though there is no big Virg van Dijk there, they do still have Gini Wijnaldum, Memphis Depay, and a whole plethora of talent, some very good defenders as well. North Macedonia, obviously a bit of an unknown. Congratulations to them for qualifying. Fantastic achievement. But, do you know what? I'm going to sneak Austria in in second place. I'm going to go with Austria. I'm going to put Ukraine in third. And I'm going to go for the North Macedonian Goran Pandev Express to finish in fourth place. Uh, we move on now to Group D, ladies and gentlemen. The big group. The group that a lot of you guys watching will be most interested in. England, Scotland, Croatia and the Czech Republic. Quite a difficult group, actually. Now, Croatia are not the force that they once were. World Cup finalists. They still have Luka Modric, some great players there. But for me, I can't see past England topping this group. I think Croatia will finish second in the group. I think Scotland will get third in the group. I think that they will pull off a win and they may get a draw elsewhere. And then I think Czech Republic to finish bottom of that group. And again, I don't mean any uh, disrespect with that, but somebody's always got to finish bottom of a group. We move on now to the group with Spain, Poland, Sweden and Slovakia. Um, again, I'm going to go fairly straightforward. Spain to finish top of this group. I'm going to go with Sweden to finish in second place, Poland to finish in third place, and our friend from Slovakia to finish down in fourth place. Uh, the, the group of the tournament for me, ladies and gentlemen, and the one that I'm most interested in watching and see how it unfolds is, of course, Group F. Portugal, France, Germany, and Hungary. Ireland, of course, played a friendly against Hungary before the Euro started. Kevin Kelleher pulled off some great saves in that one, so very proud of my fellow Irishman for keeping it to nil-nil. Uh, to top this group, look, I can't see past France. But who comes second is going to be really, really up for debate here. The Germans are known for their prowess in major tournaments. Portugal are the defending champions of the Euros. They do have a bit of an aging squad. They have Cristiano Ronaldo, though. They have Diogo Jota. They have Bruno Fernandes. They have a whole, whole host of talent. So, it's a big call. But you know what, ladies and gents? I'm being bold here. I'm going to pick Portugal to go second in that group. Germany to go third. And Hungary to get into fourth spot. One of the teams I think will get through was Wales. I'm predicting them as a bit of a dark horse for the tournament. I was doing a preview on That's Football earlier on uh, with Mark Goldbridge and a couple of other guys as well. And I was asked to pick my, my, my surprise package. And I think it could be Wales. Wales are a country that are better than the sum of their parts. Tremendously proud of their national team. And I think that they're, they're going to embrace this tournament. And I think they'll get the third place and they'll find their way through. Uh, also, I'm backing my Celtic brothers from Scotland to cause a surprise. Will it be against England? I don't know. Look, Germany. Got to get through in the best third place. Although, 
it depends who takes points off who in that group. It, it's, you know, all this is what about her, but it's a good bit of fun. And then there's one more spot left. Russia, Ukraine, or Poland. Who takes that last spot? Who takes the final place in the last 16? Ooh. Do you know what? Because of big, big Lewandowski, I'm going to give it to Poland. So let's move on now, ladies and gents, to the next round. We're looking at the quarterfinals here. Open game number one would be Belgium against Poland. Look, I can't see past Belgium. I'm putting Belgium through. Romelu Lukaku was one of my tips to be the top scorer of the tournament. Always look for players, by the way, that take penalties and stuff like that if you are going to have a little punt on somebody for a top goal scorer. Italy against Austria would be the way it's worked out for me with my predictions. Again, Italy, 27 games, I think, unbeaten under Mancini there on a great run. Um, they do have a very solid squad, Italy. It mightn't be as glamorous as Italian squads in years gone past, but a very fine squad nonetheless. So I can see Italy making it through, and as you can see there, that's shaping up for one hell of a quarterfinal, isn't it? Belgium against Italy. Next up, France versus Wales. Look, my Welsh brothers and sisters, I love you dearly, but... I can't see you getting past France if it gets to that point. So I'm going to put France through in that one, ladies and gentlemen. And again, I don't mean any disrespect to my Welsh brothers and sisters, but it is France. They are filled with an ungodly amount of talent. Um, Croatia versus Sweden, which is actually a really interesting game if that was to come about. And everybody will expect Croatia to go through. But Sweden do have some good footballers, particularly some good young footballers. Isaac up front, who we spoke about on Anfield Agenda the other night. But Croatia have big tournament experience. Zlatan is back for Sweden. Yes, he is going to the Euros with them. Yes, but for me, Luka Modric and the boys will get through that one. So I'm going to pick Croatia. Spain versus Scotland. What a tie that would be, by the way. What a game if Scotland were to get through and take on Spain. Spain have great players in almost every position. But where they do lack a little bit is up front. They've got Alvaro Morata. Um, they've got Gerard Moreno, of course, of Villarreal. And they often play with, with one up top or a false number nine. And um, when you're playing with Morata, for me, sometimes you are playing with a false number nine anyway. I know, you can throw that bad joke in the bin. Uh, but look, I can't see anything other than Spain going through there. So I'll predict them to go through. England versus Portugal. What a tie that would be if that was the case in the last 16. I mean, whoever finishes top of that England group, it's going to be very difficult for them coming up against somebody from the group with Germany, Portugal, France, etc. So, England versus Portugal. If my memory is correct, I think this could be in Rome, if my memory is right. So, England versus Portugal. How do I see this one working out? I could see this one going all the way to a penalty shootout, perhaps. England versus Portugal. You know what? I'm going to go on the side of youth. I'm going to go with England because I do think with the, the, the squad Gareth Southgate has at his disposal, the attacking talent he has with Grealish, Foden, Mount, Sterling, Kane, so many really good players. I just can't see past them getting through. Um, and if they don't, it'll, I think it'll be because of Gareth Southgate and because he doesn't utilise those attacking players enough. Portugal would defend manfully, of course. I'm, I'm still debating it in my own head here, but I'm going to go with England. I'm going to stick up my decision. Holland against Germany or the Netherlands against Germany. Interesting tournament this for Germany because obviously their manager is going to be changed. Yogi Lowe is going to be replaced by Hansi Flick when the tournament's over. Will they go out with a bang? You know what? I don't think they will, folks. I think they'll go out with a whimper. And I'm going to make a big call here. And I'm going to pick the Dutch to go through and knock out the Germans, if that was the case. Um, you mean, there's only so many times Team Werner can be offside in one game anyway. And I think if he does miss those opportunities with Germany, the Dutch will be efficient enough to perhaps punish them. And then the last one will be Turkey against Denmark. And you know what? I'm going to carry on the roll for Turkey. I'm going to keep going on the Turkey bandwagon. So I'll put Turkey through. Let's go back up now and see who we will have in the semi-final lineup. So, first quarter-final, Belgium against Italy. What a belter of a game this would be. All the attacking talent of Belgium against the nous of the Italians, the defensive rigidity of the Italians. I'm going to go with Italy. I'm going to go with Italy. I've done it there, folks. There's no going back now. I've done it. I've gone with Italy to go through. France versus Croatia. I don't need to think too long about this. Viva la France. They're going through on that one. Uh, Spain against England. This would be another belter of a game. I mean, if you're looking at England's potential path through here with the way I've unfolded the tournament, Portugal and then Spain, that would be a very difficult role for Gareth Southgate's men. But a lot of the games are going to be at Wembley. They're going to have home field advantage. They're going to have home comforts. So you know what? 
I'm going to get it. I'm going to send England through. I'm going to do it. I'm going to send them through. A Harry Kane penalty in the 89th minute to send them through. Then the Netherlands against Turkey. For me, I think this is where Turkey's competition will come to an end, albeit... You know, if they make it to the quarterfinals, I think that's a great achievement for them. They've got some very good young players, some solid defenders in Soyuncu as well. Uh, and, of course, the, the gentleman that we had on loan from, from Schalke. So, you know, are they good enough? Is Ozan Kabak good enough to carry the defence? Maybe with Soyuncu aside or beside him. I'm going to go for the Netherlands to go through. So, my semi-final lineup looks a little bit like this, ladies and gentlemen. Italy against France and England against the Netherlands. And so, funnily enough, that would probably be the easiest game that I've, I've given England with this route so far. We'll start off with a top game though, Italy against France, defence against attack for me. And the one thing I've always said about this French team is no matter who they come up against, I think they'll find a way. If they come up against the low block, I think they'll unpick the defence. If they need to play balls long to Giroud to knock them down, they can do that as well. I don't see Italy having that same firepower, albeit they certainly have the guile, they certainly have the heart, they certainly have the defensive nous, but I think France will have too much. So I'm picking France to go through, and then England versus the Netherlands. The Dutch are going to go through on penalties. That's what happens in semi-finals, isn't it? The English go out in penalty shootouts around the semi, so... You know, I don't see any reason why that will change here. And then in the final, France versus the Netherlands, look... I've said all along, I think France are going to go and win the tournament. So I'm going to pick France to be the winner. There you go. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. I've sorted it all out for you. You can now go to the bookie, stick all your money on that. It's going to fold out. Nah, it's not. Of course, it's not going to fold out exactly as I've said. But I have had a little bit of fun making this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget, get yourself onto the UEFA website. You'll be able to do this yourself. Let me know if you agree with my predictions. I'm sure you won't because, I've, as I said at the very start, I will get a lot of these wrong, ladies and gentlemen. But I've had a lot of fun doing it. Don't forget, Boyle Sports will be bringing you all our coverage of the Euros on Anfield Agenda. Hit that subscribe button, drop a like on the video. Let me know your thoughts on what I've predicted in the comments section below. Myself and Jack Gill will be taking you through the Euros and Anfield Agenda. And as always, we've got our late night agendas, 8.30, almost every night. Hope to see you for that. That's our new show where we talk about transfers and all things Liverpool. Ladies and gents, it's been a pleasure. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Lots of love.